can hear it. It's still pretty faint. You might be wondering what I'm looking for. I'm tracking an endangered species, the New Mexico Meadow Jumping Mouse. Jumping mice occur only in Arizona, Colorado, and New Mexico, and during summer, use riparian areas with dense, tall, diverse herbaceous vegetation. During their short active period of three to four months, jumping mice must breed, raise young, and store enough fat reserves to survive hibernation. For the other eight to nine months each year, jumping mice hibernate. The New Mexico Meadow Jumping Mouse is listed under the Endangered Species Act because excessive grazing, drought, water shortages, wildfire, and flooding have led to habitat loss and fragmentation. For jumping mice to persist and recover, we need to understand the ecology of the species. Tracking animals allows us to discover their home ranges and how far they're capable of moving. A home range is the area that an animal regularly travels to find food, cover, water, and mates. It's an animal's cognitive map of its environment. Home ranges are calculated using methods such as minimum convex polygon and kernel density. Both methods rely on providing enough locations for an individual over a long enough time to provide a good estimate. A minimum convex polygon is the smallest polygon containing all locations. Simple in concept and widely used, it tends to overestimate home range and can include locations that the animal never uses. Kernel density estimates the home range of an animal by identifying areas where the animal spends most of its time. These are areas with the highest densities of locations. Kernel density home range estimates exclude areas that an animal avoids even if those areas are inside the overall extent of locations. Since 2017, we have been tracking jumping mice to estimate their home ranges. To gather locations, or fixes, we place live traps along streams and rivers wading in water as much as possible to avoid trampling vegetation used by the jumping mice. Traps are opened near dusk to capture nocturnal animals and are checked at dawn. When we capture a New Mexico meadow jumping mouse, we check its mass, sex, and reproductive condition. Animals weighing 15 grams or more are potentials for collaring. We collar both males and females unless females are pregnant or lactating. Radio collars weigh about half a gram, include a tie-gone sleeve around the wire to protect the animal's neck from abrasion, and transmit for about three weeks. A little peanut butter keeps the animal occupied while we position the collar. Once fitted around the animal's neck, the collar is tightened and crimped. The jumping mouse is placed in a holding box for about 10 minutes to check collar fit, and then released at point of capture. Collars weigh no more than 5% of the body mass of the animal. We locate each jumping mouse two to eight times per night with at least one hour between fixes. Technicians use red light to minimize disturbance to the animals when tracking. Although we periodically spot the animals, nighttime fixes are generally within one to three meters of the actual location of the animal. Each day, we identify the animal's diurnal nest. From the past three years tracking jumping mice, we have home range estimates and movement data for 48 animals. We tracked 22 animals in Arizona, 19 in New Mexico, and 7 in Colorado. Per animal, home ranges are based on an average of 52 fixes collected over 13 days. Home ranges averaged 4 hectares for minimum convex polygon and 3.4 hectares for 95% kernel density. Males used larger 95% kernel density areas of about 4.5 hectares compared to 1.7 hectares for females. Home ranges for females throughout the summer, ranging from 0.1 to 7.7 hectares, were more consistent in size than males that ranged from 0.1 to 28.4 hectares. Male home ranges were larger in June and early July, just after emergence from hibernation. The maximum distance males moved between fixes averaged 400 meters, which was twice as large as females at 200 meters. Several males moved over a kilometer in one hour. Tracking these fast-moving animals meant running in waders, not easy at night. Jumping mice stayed in stream corridors and did not move throughout the upland vegetation. Although distance moved in home ranges for males was larger than females, 
both male and female jumping mice remained close to riparian areas. Locations averaged 9 meters from streams. The average maximum distance an animal moved from streams was 40 meters. Keep in mind, these are averages. Several individual animals moved over 100 meters from a stream. While tracking animals at night, we observed some interesting behaviors. Dramatic jumpers, this species is also an agile climber and can move easily up plant stems, using its tail and feet for grip and stability. These tools come in handy when crossing streams. Their large feet also make them strong swimmers, and we frequently heard or saw them in streams, ferrying downstream or crossing to the opposite side. Jumping mice use partially submerged culverts with flowing water to cross under roads at several sites. On rare occasions, we saw them cross one-lane gravel roads. We noticed a change in behavior between June, just after emergence, and the rest of the active period. Early in the season, we frequently saw two to six jumping mice within one meter of each other. They were not feeding, but actively moving close to other jumping mice. On one occasion, a male and female jumping mouse shared a day nest. Later in the season, although two animals might be in proximity, they were usually three to 10 meters apart, feeding. We encountered jumping mice feeding on a variety of plant species, including seeds and flowers of grasses and forbs. We collared 82 jumping mice, but only calculated home ranges for 48 animals. What happened to the others? Some dropped their collars before we had taken enough locations, but 16 went missing, and at least three were in an area where feral cats were common. We do know the fate of four animals. Two were predated by terrestrial garter snakes, probably while they were sleeping in day nests. One was taken by an owl, and a wild horse might have crushed one animal. Our estimates for home range sizes indicate females are consistent in their home range sizes while those of males are larger, particularly after emergence from hibernation. Maybe males are seeking females or establishing territories in June and early July. We also noticed how fast jumping mice can move. In several instances, animals moved hundreds of meters between fixes. One male moved 800 meters in 70 minutes. This is a rate of 11 meters per minute or 36 feet per minute. A female jumping mouse moved 500 meters in 25 minutes with a movement rate of 20 meters per minute or 66 feet per minute. In June, movements like these occurred frequently early in the evening, but after midnight, movements were much shorter. Despite the variation in home range sizes, movement away from streams varied little between years, months, and sexes. Jumping mice appear restricted to high quality habitat and tall vegetation in riparian zones. Given that this species relies on riparian vegetation for food and cover, remaining close to riparian areas better meets those habitat needs. This fall, we tracked several animals into hibernation. Although we can't be sure these are hibernacula without unearthing animals, the attenuation of transmitter signals and lack of drop collars indicate that they could be. These potential hibernacula were within four meters of streams, but otherwise inconspicuous. With our success this fall in recapturing and recoloring jumping mice, and the knowledge of emergence dates on October 1st and 5th, we have a better knowledge for gathering information next year. <laughs>